Welcome to the Texas Instruments OMAP 3530, OMAP 3503 Developer Series Module 5. In this module, we will download, rebuild, and install a TFTP server. We will then configure Dam Small Linux to automatically start the NFS server and TFTP server each time we boot. Finally, we will download and configure the Minicom Serial Terminal Emulator. After the completion of this module, we will have all the tools needed to boot Linux on an OMAP 3503 or OMAP 3530 processor. We'll begin by going out to the internet and searching for a TFTP server. Going to Google, I type download Linux TFTP server. I'll take the first link that comes up and it looks like we've hit the jackpot. Uh, as you can see, this is a license-free downloadable TFTP server for Linux. Go to the mirror number one at the top. It takes us to SourceForge. And there's two versions that you can download. One of them, MT, is the multi-threaded, and that's the one I'm going to choose. Once I'm done with that, we go back to the desktop, open up a terminal, I can untar the package we just downloaded, then going into TFTP server MT, we see a number of files come in the package, and I'd recommend that you go through the README, which explains the meaning of each of these files. Now there is one gotcha that can come up here which is the TFTP server with no extension file that comes with this archive is a pre-compiled version of the server, but it was compiled for Linux kernel 2.6. And so if you use this executable without recompiling, you'll have difficulties on this system. Specifically, there'll be a shared object library, the lib standard c++.so.6 which won't be found, and if you try and just import it, then it won't work with this version of the kernel. So we're going to go ahead and remove that file and create a new make file that we can use to rebuild the TFTP server. Uh, you can see here I put in just one rule, all TFTP server.cpp is the source file, which is the only dependency. And then the rule says G++, which is the C++ GNU compiler, on the source file TFTP server C++, and then dot dash O to specify the output. I run make here in the terminal, and it builds correctly. By the way, uh, you also need a dash L P thread in the make file to link in the P thread library. Once we've gone through the make process and rebuilt the TFTP server, now what I'm going to do is copy this file rc.tftp server to etc. init.d. This is a script that, as you'll read in the README, is meant to be placed in this directory and is used to start and stop the TFTP server as a demonized service. Also in the README, it specifies that the application is expected to be in the opt TFTP server MT directory. So I'm going to make dir TFTP server, I've actually already done that, and then copy the TFTP server application that we just built into the opt TFTP server MT directory. Now that that's done, we can test that everything's been uh, correctly built by running etc. init.d rc tftp server start and you see that the tftp server does indeed start correctly. Now the final thing that we need to do now that we've copied the rc.tftp server script into etc. init.d and rebuild TFTP server.cpp and copy the corresponding application into slash op slash TFTP server MT is we need to copy the TFTP server.ini file, the initialization file. We'll want to do this as root permissions. So sudo 
copy tftp server.ini into the slash etc folder. Once it's been copied, then also under root permissions, sudo vi slash etc slash tftp server.ini. So go ahead and edit the copy of this initialization file. The only change I'm going to make is under the home section, I'm going to add in a home directory slash tftp boot. So slash tftp boot will be the home directory for our tftp server. We also need to create that server, so sudo mkdir make dir slash tftp boot. Uh, on my system I've actually already got this directory, but uh, just to show you how the command would look there. Um, and now you should have everything correctly set up for your tftp server on this system. Next thing that we're going to need to do is to configure our initialization scripts, our startup scripts, uh, in order to kick off the TFTP server as well as the NFS server in our system. We can do that in a file called init tab. It's slash etc slash init tab. Uh, and I'm using the VI editor in order to edit that. The format of this file is four items separated by colons. So if you take a look here, I have NF, which is just a tag, uh, up to two letters long, colon 2345, which says that for run levels two through five, this service is going to run. Another colon, and then once. What this says is it's startup, kick off the daemon service, but don't kick it off again. Uh, even if it's killed off. This will allow you to stop the service if for some reason you need to. And then finally, after the final colon, is the name of the service, basically the mode or the, the application call that you used to start the service. And as you can see, there's four services I'm starting here. The port map, NFS common, NFS kernel server, and then finally the TFTP server. I can then exit and reboot the system. When the system reboots here, then these services will have been started for us automatically. Uh, you know, and again, so that they don't have to be started by hand. I open up now a terminal, and I can use the PS with the AUX options, and this will show the currently running processes. It's real easy to pick out the TFTP server because the the name of the process has TFTP server in it. Uh, you can see them running right here. Just above them, port map and rpc.statd, those are the daemon services that you're going to expect to be running when the NTSC server is running. So uh, if you have those five services listed here under PSAUX, uh, these five right here, then you can expect that your services are running correctly on the system. Final thing that we're going to do is download Minicom applications. So if I go into My DSL and kick off My DSL, there is a Minicom package that somebody was nice enough to upload. It's under the testing section. Scroll down and find Minicom. As you can see here, it's actually minicom-183.dsl. Download that. And when the download completes, I can shut down and go to a terminal. Inside the terminal, we kick off the application just by typing minicom. Uh, you can hit Control A and then Z for help. When you do that, uh, you see here P is the way that you set the COM parameters, so I hit P. And to communicate with the OMAP board, you're going to want to hit I to change to 100, uh, 115,200 8N1 settings on the serial port.